Hello and welcome to Big Picture. The issue of CBI's functional independence has been a topic of debate and discussion since last few weeks. And today, the central government has formed a group of ministers to go ahead and draft a law so that it can insulate the premier investigating agency from external influences. This GOM, headed by Finance Minister P. Chidambaram, will also deliberate on views or rather ways to further strengthen CBI's autonomy and safeguard it from any type of outside interference. But amidst this clamor for independence to police and investigative agencies, several questions go unanswered. Can a democracy like India afford to give near absolute powers to police? No one can deny the conflict of interest when investigative agencies or those who are investigating report to the people, those who are under investigation. But is this a reason enough to remove the oversight of political executive over the police forces? How can we find a fine balance between these conflicting ends is something which we are going to go ahead and discuss today. For this, uh, we have with us a uh, uh, senior historian, very well-known eminent personality, Rakesh Batabayal, with me out here in the studios. Also, we have uh, uh, senior Congress leader and Rajya Sabha MP, uh, Mr. Satyavar Chaturvedi, joining us uh, we will also have uh, one more uh, distinguished guest, and uh, that will be a human rights activist as well as uh, director of uh, Asian Center for Human Rights, uh, Mr. Suhash Chakma, in a short while from now. Uh, but before that, let's, let's, let me begin with uh, Mr. Bhattabayal. Straight away coming to the point, uh, uh, Mr. Bhattabayal, do you think that the time is ripe? This is exactly the time wherein we need to go ahead and get in more functional autonomy for investigative agencies or police forces like CBI? No, there's no time which is exactly ripe at that point of time. It could have been earlier, it could have been later. What actually we are witnessing is a clash of a, within a society which is transitioning. And this is a very peculiar crisis because the one hand you have a middle class which, are, which, which has gated societies, they all want state to move away from their lives, only to collect garbage, for instance, in cities. Whereas there's a huge population which wants state to come into their lives, the poor, the marginal, the sub. Now they want the state to come in. And both this society, if you see, their need for policing are completely different. One wants justice to come to their lives, on the other hand, other, other section talks about law and order and autonomy. Both wants autonomy from uh, autonomy of policing in the sense that the poor, the low middle class, the villagers and where lawlessness prevails in many parts of the city, they want police to protect them from the rich, from the marauders, from the looter. On the other hand, a, 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 a huge section is emerging which wants pro police to provide them a good governance in law and order wherever they can live happily in their gated society. Now, in this kind of transition, uh, we are talking about autonomy. Remember, this autonomy is also talked by the same group of people who demanded hanging on the first instant. Rape, rape uh, molesters hang. This hang. So this is a very interesting location where the voice is coming is has to, has to be located, examined, explored, analyzed. It has, to be, it has to be found out as to how it has to be done. That's what uh, the point is. Let me uh, bring in uh, our uh, guest, uh, uh, Mr. Satyavar Chaturvedi, uh, a senior leader of the Congress. Sir, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, your party has been running the government at the center for uh, past nine years and it has ruled uh, earlier as well. There have been uh, accusations in the past and uh, uh, not, not uh, you know, very far away in the recent past, only in the, in the last session which just got over the budget session, we saw accusations once again flying thick and high against your government uh, about the misuse of CBI. Do you think that your government has uh, uh, been in a reactionary mode because just uh, Today, uh, the, the, a GOM has been set up by the government to go ahead and uh, draft a bill to insulate the CBI from uh, external influences. Well, I've been in politics for over 42 years now. I worked as a, a municipal corporator and thereafter as MLA many times over. 
and then in Lok Sabha I have served as member and now I am serving for the second term in Rajya Sabha. So all these years I have been through ups and downs, accusations and allegations and doubts that were raised now and then by opposition and even press, media, intellectuals and everybody. I wouldn't say that all the doubts and accusations that were being made, whether in this case or in past, were all wrong. No. The truth of the matter is that some of the accusations really were serious. Some of the accusations, yes, of course, were politically motivated as well. But not going into detail of all those accusations and wasting time, let me come back to the point straight away. The point is whether do you need a mechanism which can be trusted, a mechanism that can investigate without outside influence, a mechanism that is effective and can also contribute towards curbing the crime in the society. That is the main point. And I think, yes, there is a need for such a mechanism. Now, who will do that? Of course, the government in power, the government of the day. It is government's responsibility to respond to situations and in a democracy, people's uh, sentiments and their aspirations have to be met by government. Okay, you're right. But you're right. at the you're same right, time, Chaturvedi, the government in power will do it. Uh, let me, uh, you know, take a cue from uh, what you uh, just right now, right now said. You're admitting that uh, on not all the accusations have been wrong. What? Can I question... just put in a word? Can I just put in a word and complete what I was saying? In doing so, I must caution everybody, including my government, not to overreact, not to give a knee-jerk reaction and not to overdo. Be sure that you do not destroy the basic structure of the police. If you do that, then you are going to create a monster which will be out of control and which will have more of problems created in society rather than solve them. Very important coming in from a member of the ruling party that uh, uh, the, the due care must be taken not to uh, destroy the existing mechanism and find a way out so that, so that you can strengthen the existing mechanism. Uh, also, Mr. Suhash Chakma has uh, joined us. Uh, uh, welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Chakma. Let me uh, straight away come to you on this. Uh, Mr. Chaturvedi says that uh, the existing mechanism, what rather we can assume the intends to say is that the existing mechanism is strong enough. Let's not go ahead and uh, meddle with the existing mechanism, find a way out. Do you think that the steps being taken right now or the clamor for the greater independence or the, or the larger autonomy for uh, investigative agencies, specifically CBI, and in turn, their demands will start coming in for other police forces, other organizations as well. Is that rightly placed? No, it's not rightly placed. I think there are a number of issues. First of all, independence is not something which is given. I mean, you have to create a number of conditions. Unless you create those conditions, uh, you could actually create a Frank Frankenstein monster because there is a need for oversight. Now, the issue is, is the, what is required is not political oversight. What is required is the accountability. Unless the police forces, whether it's CBI, IB, or any organizations, they are accountable for their conduct. And you do not have to take permission from their own superiors to prosecute them for any kind of illegal acts is done. You actually cannot have independence. You cannot have independence when the serving police officers are appointed in various posts. When the, uh, when the judges are immediately, you know, after their retirement, given plum post somewhere. I'll give an example. Let's look at the SC Sina, who was the director general of the National Investigative Agency. Now, if he has been appointed as a member of the National Human Rights Commission, before actually his term as NIH chief had come to an end. Now, if there is a particular CBI director who is going to be immediately replaced or appointed as somewhere in some place as governor, then what kind of independence are you going to ensure? Because at the end of the day, CBI director will have its own political contacts. And today, maybe the current CBI chief may not be picked up by the Congress, but you cannot stop the NDA picking him up. So the very fact that there are a number of ways where independence can be compromised, that's the biggest issue. So the first issue is the police will have to be held accountable. And at the moment, we cannot do that because you require prior sanction. Who gives prior sanctions? It's their own bosses. 
And so, what kind of permission do you get? So the question uh, which you seem to be raising is who guards the guardian? Because the police forces are considered to be the guardian, uh, those, those, uh, those people who are going to go ahead and upheld uh, the law and order in the society. But the question which you're raising is who guards the guardian itself? Uh, uh, let me go back to uh, uh, Mr. Satyavat Chaturvedi, sir. The question is, who guards the guardian? Is that the question which your government is also facing? Because you pointed out that it is the duty of the government of the day to respond and to formulate mechanisms, to strengthen the existing mechanisms. Is that the question which your government is also facing? Who will guard the guardian? Every democratic government will face the similar situation and similar question. In a democracy, my dear, there is no single person or no single institution that guards the guardians or non-guardians. It is always a balance, check and balance, which works in a democracy. It is multiple uh, controls that do not allow any single institution or individual to do what he feels is good or what he feels is in his interest. So therefore, what we need to do is, you identify the weaknesses in the system, and honestly start doing the reverse process, the reverse exercise of eliminating those weaknesses from the system. The system is not altogether wrong, but there are, yes, there are loops and holes. These loops and holes need to be plugged. And this is where I say, don't overdo, but must do what is necessary to make the whole system effective and trustworthy. That is what I recommend. System is not entirely long. That's, that's what uh, Mr. Chaturvedi says. And, and it, the, 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 uh, the intelligence lies in not overdoing, but rather uh, doing what is required. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Bhattabhayal. Looking back, do you think the autonomy for police forces or independence for police forces is rightly feared in democratic setup? You know, we are talking about, say, the clamor has come for CBI. But we are, since we are talking about the larger police force as such... It will definitely come in for other police forces once it is being no, done for CBI. Why well. uh, CBI? If I you would come to all the agencies. My, my response, to the response to this would be, why don't we change the police force itself? Because ultimately, your IB, your CBI, your intelligence officers or, or uh, simple investigators will come from the force itself. Now, yesterday itself, the Lucknow crime, crime branch had to be disbanded because they became what one Hindi pulp fiction writer wrote, Vardi Wala Gunda. Now, if that is the situation, where to start with? Now, the larger question that Congress party actually should have led was about uh, reforming the police system, which Rustamji and others have, have, been clamored, have been clamoring for years now. So that is one question, reforming the police system itself. Because what we inherited the police system for the colonial period over the years, it has undergone tremendous changes. The social profile of the policemen has changed. Social profile of the IPS officers have changed. On, on top of it, the larger vision of a nation has already dis disappearing from many sections. Mm -hmm. So you have a fragmented society where the leadership is not able to provide the larger fixing cementing factor. In this situation, we are talking about autonomy for the police. And Satyabhata Chitavari is absolutely right. You have the evidence of CIA. You have the evidence of FBI. The Italian investigating agency is actually so they, they collaborate are, with they, them. They are, there are several uh, instances if you look, if you look back in past they and assassinate. if you look at your neighbors they as assassinate. well. They assassinate. In fact, our investigating agency have done I'm not talking about raw and others, but they have done well. They have not inf infringed in the human rights as much as the other big democratic countries uh, investigating agencies. Oh, I'm sure. Done. I'm sure Mr. Chakma will have something to say no, out no. here. But but before you before you go ahead and say something, uh, we'll continue our discussion on this. Uh, uh, but before that, we will have to take a short break here. Welcome back. We're discussing the issue of whether or not uh, political oversight, or rather, uh, you know. Uh, absolute independence should be given to the police forces, the question of how much autonomy should be given to uh, the police organizations, whether uh, be it CBI or other police forces. Uh, before we went into the break, uh, Mr. Bhattabhayal raised a very uh, uh, interesting point, saying that there are several instances of uh, uh, you know, overreach by the police forces. But then in case of Indian agencies, uh, that's uh, uh, not entirely true. Is that so? Well, I think, I mean, first of all, when it comes to human rights violations, 
it does not matter whether you are Indian or Americans or Italian. If there is one difference, that is the accountability and how fast you can you know, actually establish justice. I think the key problem with the Indian police system is not the reform which the police have been talking about. It is not what the 1980 National Police Commission report had come, uh, talked about. It is not the Supreme Court judgment which gives certain directions in procuring case. All these directions without accountability of the police will fail. And in 1997, when the government of India amended section 197 of the criminal procedural code, from that day onwards, you require permission to prosecute any policeman, irrespective of whether he is accused of rape, extrajudicial killings, to, prosec to prosecute him, and you do not get the permission. So a victim will have to go from post to pillar, and it has created a system where the public servants who are actually are supposed to serve the public have become the masters over the public. So this is where the problem arises. And unless you establish that accountability procedures that a police officer will have to be accountable for his conduct and that is to be decided by the judge, not a bureaucrat, not a police officer. It is for the judge to decide whether a case is made out or case is not made out. It is not for any individuals. So we have a system in this country where actually the Supreme Court cannot proceed without the permission of an undersecretary. So because of the section 197 and lots of provisions in all the special laws. So we have created a system where actually executive is sitting over the head of the bureaucracy unless that system is demolished first. If you have the police reform where you give autonomy, you will be creating Frankenstein monster. And exactly he had said, you know, you have to disband the entire criminal investigation department in Lucknow. So what does it suggest? We so have to have the accountability. So you, you, you say that police reforms will have to be, uh, you know, combined with uh, 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 several other steps to be taken before granting. Not only combined, the accountability has to come first. Unless that comes up, police in any case are so much empowered and there is so much abuse of power by the police. And if you make them autonomous without accountability, then exactly you will have a situation like the military in uh, Pakistan. Let, let, me, let me go back to the representative of uh, the ruling party out here. Mr. Chaturvedi, the view uh, coming out here is that uh, uh, what is the most important thing is the accountability uh, before uh, giving the due powers which are being asked for or which is being uh, you know uh, uh, talked about uh, in the public domain for quite some time and uh, that's uh, that also seems to be the basic root cause of all the allegations uh, flying thick and high in the political circles do you agree that uh, the the focus more or less should be more on accountability exactly i think i can't agree more with uh, what uh, the gentleman was saying just now uh, in a democratic society, you can't have anybody who's not accountable to somebody. Now, a system has to work. It's not the individuals. Now, you know that there is something wrong, something missing somewhere, which really creates all the flutter. Now, what is that? I have earlier talked in this very program that you need to have an identification of those areas where your weaknesses destroy or, or make the system weak. Now, this is to be done, but who does it? Now, the government will have its own exercise, but then again, some questions will be raised. Well, government has deliberately left out this, that, or that. Now, so what do you do? Then you go to the Supreme Court and say, okay, fine, you are the most judicious people. Now, you identify as to what are the weaknesses. Is the judicial system free of weaknesses himself, itself? There are several umpteen of cases. I do not want to go into detail, but the judicial system has its own weaknesses. Then who does it? Do you ask the people in this country at large that you please tell us what to do? So you will ultimately have to trust somebody or a combination of all these three will have to work, let the government come out with its recommendations, let some other institution like judiciary or others or intellectuals study that, uh, those recommendations, and then finally, after discussion and deliberation, you fine-tune the whole system, and then you evolve a system whereby you don't lose the accountability, you don't create a monster, you know, uh, my friend was talking about CIA and so many others. I mean, even Scotland Yard is not free of controversies. I know there were cases against KGB agents and what all was revealed after USSR was uh, 
demolished. We all know what kind of a filth came out. So world over, these intelligence and investigative agencies have been in controversy, in the eye of controversy, either now or then. Now what we need is, in our place, in our country, we need to have a multi-check organ. And that kind of a system, which doesn't give absolute power to anyone or any institution, that kind of a check is required. So the, so, so the solution, the so the solution from your side seems to be a multi-shaped organ. Uh, Mr. Sarvedi, I'll, I'll come back to you. Let me bring in uh, uh, Mr. Batabal out here. Uh, Bo all three of you uh, spoke about, rather both of you, uh, even Mr. Chaturvedi in, in, in the initial stage spoke about, uh, referred to rather police reforms. The, 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 the way the entire police uh, uh, structure, uh, you know, the police organization have been structured and the way they are functioning. We've been talking so much about giving, uh, you know, in, independence uh, or larger autonomy to these uh, police organizations or not giving it to them, be, uh, ensuring that there are checks and balances. But what about their own organizational structure, their own setup? Haven't we, uh, as, as a democracy, uh, faltered at this particular point? Uh, the police reforms have not been implemented properly. Their working condition is not uh, uh, to the point. Is that, is that what it is? You know, this is what I started with, the transition society. We are growing, we are maturing, and we learn from the witnesses or evidence of the history. But the crux is the issue where the political leadership is abdicating its responsibility to bureaucracy. And similarly, the legislation, legislative uh, the section is abdicating its responsibility to the judiciary. So judiciary is coming in. You know, FBI, the director used to be a judge sometime a just, from the justice. Kennedy brought a judge, uh, sorry, Nixon brought a just, judge to manage his affair after Watergate. So all these are there. What we are lacking in absolute terms is this notion that we want, don't want to give autonomy to the child in the sense that no university in the country are free from the bureaucratic control. No department autonomous cultural, you go to ICCR, you go to ICA, all departments are working under tremendous control by the bureaucracy. We don't want to give free hand to the creativity of any department. Similarly, the worst case in the police, particularly this investigating department, is the lack of dignity that the policemen enjoy. The, even the senior most officers work under the thumb of either the minister or the bureaucrat or whatever his so, superior. So, so, so where does unless, the problem lies? Who, who's unless responsible for we it? understand the professionals needs to be given that dignity, the dignified existence, his professionalism has to be honored rather than suppressed and therefore given the autonomy, on autonomy free play. They are, and police, police is just one part of the society. You just go and see the universities across the country. They have been destroyed by the section that uh, suppresses them. So the uh, police officers will come from these universities. They won't come from Harvard and Stanford. They, Harvard, Stanford will come to study them. So you mean to say the problem lies with the political will to go ahead and exactly. take the proper action exactly. at the proper time. Let me let me bring in uh, Mr. Chaturvedi once again uh, for the last time. We are running uh, short of time. Uh, a short and quick uh, reaction from you, Mr. Chaturvedi. You yourself said that the initiative will have to be taken by the government of the day. Uh, but would you not agree, and as Mr. Batabayal is pointing it out, uh, that those initiatives have been half-hearted initiatives in the recent past, if you look at it that way, be it police reforms or be it granting autonomy to police organizations? Well, uh, be it a politician or a policeman or a bureaucrat or a judge or anybody for that matter, where does he come from? He comes from this very society. Now, if in our own socialist structure, there have been devaluation, devaluation all around, then you don't expect people to perform that, that well and that efficiently as you really desire them to do. Now, this is a weakness of our social weakness within our society. Now, we will have to ultimately address this point unless you do that. All attempts that you are making towards improving the judiciary or improving the police or improving the politicians or improving the bureaucracy, these will fall short of what is desired. What I would say is, yes, it is the responsibility of the political leadership to take the first step and take it not half-heartedly but with determination. Okay. And this is what is required. I hope it happens 
sooner than later. Okay, it is for the political uh, leadership to go ahead and uh, take the first step. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Chakmayu for the last quick short reaction. Is the political leadership or the political blast class taking this first step in the right direction? I don't think they are taking the right step in the step in the right direction. And in fact, what Mr. Chaturvedi is saying is basically trying to cover the entire political class under the social background that what where we come from. Now, if there is no leadership provided, and you still rely on the, your social background, you are not going to find a solution. I'll give one example: the Lokpal Bill. I think provided very good suggestions in terms of ensuring independence of the members. And one of the key provisions was somebody who serves in the Lokpal bill, after serving his term, should not be given some, should not be contesting election, should not be holding public position for about five years. Now, that is what is one of the main concern. Why are the bureaucrats are so powerful? The bureaucrats are so powerful, you cannot find any statutory institution in this country where unless they are either politically connected, which is a very insignificant person, percentage, it's either the IAS officials or IPS officials or IFS officials or retired judges. You look at any commission, any statutory bodies, where you do not find the former officials. And that creates some kind of a patronage system which everybody loves. And they are addressing the issue simply because Ashini Kumar has been caught pants off, as simple as that. Okay, great. Uh, so there are uh, problems abound and uh, there are uh, uh, efforts to go ahead and find solutions to those problems as well. Uh, at least, uh, I guess all of us agree out here that democracy seems to be a balancing act of uh, competing legitimate values and so should uh, democratic uh, uh, policing should be. That's, that's what uh, I guess uh, uh, the idea lies behind all this uh, entire exercise of uh, granting a larger autonomy, finding uh, the checks and balances between uh, th that particular autonomy as well as uh, the independence and ensuring that they work in free and fair way. So this was all in Big Picture today. Keep watching Rajasabha Television. We'll come back tomorrow again with a different topic.